Hello again and welcome back to the channel. I hope you all are having a wonderful day and are staying safe. Let's get straight into the video. Little is known about Ethan Blair Miller, other than he was born on October 31st, 2001, in Bend, Oregon. We will be starting off with a few facts about Ethan, and then we'll dive deep into the rabbit hole that are his writings. He attended school at Mountain View High School, where he would join up and participate in a mixed martial arts club, and according to his family, he loved it. A former MMA coach of Ethan's, Justin True, states that Ethan and him both bonded over mutual mental health issues. According to Justin, Ethan gave off signs that he may have been picked on and that he didn't have many friends. Justin states, quote, there was never, never a hint of wanting to hurt other people, ever. From the outside, Ethan looked like the usual depressed teen. He didn't have many friends, a girlfriend, and mostly kept to himself when he wasn't participating in fights. A former classmate of Ethan's, Isaac Thomas, told reporters that Ethan was a huge fan of MMA and, quote, tried to fight everyone at Mountain View and kept getting his ass kicked. He was always trying to fight and cause issues and start shit. In 2016, during their freshman year, Isaac and Ethan frequently clashed and eventually engaged in a physical altercation at school, leading to a one-week suspension. Isaac told reporters, quote, at one point he said he was going to shoot me, and I was like, get over yourself, because I didn't think he had a gun, but I guess I was wrong. After high school, Ethan was employed as a cart pusher at a local Safeway. According to Isaac, he had run into Ethan in the Safeway parking lot in 2020. Ethan was working, rounding up the store's shopping carts to bring back inside. When the two crossed paths, it was like Ethan never forgot the hatred he had for Isaac. Ethan once again threatened to kill Isaac in the parking lot. Despite the considerable time that had passed, Ethan's hatred of Isaac remained strong, and he persisted in holding on to the grudge he had against him. I'm not sure how this altercation ended, but I can only imagine Isaac did not take the threat seriously and walked away. Isaac had no clue how dangerous and unstable Ethan had grown to become, but really, no one did. No one but Ethan himself. I'm not sure what Ethan did from 2020 to 2022. I was not able to find much info about him from anywhere. I do know that at some point, Ethan's view on life began to degrade drastically, to the point where he no longer wanted to live. On Wednesday, June 29th of 2022, Ethan started an online journal he called The Downward Spiral of Ethan Miller, where he would document his thoughts and feelings and the future attack. His first entry reads, quote, If you're reading this, then I'm definitely dead and have just committed a national tragedy. I've left this journal for all the investigators, media, internet sleuths, etc. But most importantly, this is for the very few people that I actually care about and want to understand why and how this happened so that they can be at peace. I'm going to lay it all out for you all so that by the end of all of this, you will all understand why I did what I did. What you'll see here is the documentation and description of the months, weeks, days from today, up until the massacre. Keep in mind, I read somewhere that these writings were all public, but nobody ever saw them until the actual attacks happened. Ethan continues, he writes, quote, Well then, I guess I should tell you all a little bit about myself, yeah? Not much that's noteworthy, and most of the stuff about my birth and early life, ah, uh, back when things were much, much simpler, is going to be pretty easy to find. I've changed a lot since then, obviously lol. The real changes started a little over two years ago when COVID first started to become a global thing. God, that still fucking pisses me off. I still cannot believe that the entire world fell for that. The virus itself was real and deadly, but instead of actually coming up with a real solution to the problem, they, meaning the tyrannical US government, instead used the problem to create mass hysteria and panic among us, meaning the people of America, and then forced us into isolation and loneliness for a significant amount of time. I still haven't been able to pull myself out of that state. 
Despite numerous attempts at getting back into MMA, which I still love so dearly and always will, despite numerous attempts at new jobs, despite numerous attempts at finding love once again, despite numerous attempts at being social and trying to make new friendships, they have all proved futile. So now we're here. I hope that this journal can give you all a sense of peace and closure. But the world has made this happen. I am responsible for this, but I was turned into a monster. I created this tragedy, but society created me. Stay tuned. Ethan. On his second page, dated Thursday, June 30th, 2022, Ethan complains about going to work knowing he has no interest in living. He admits he could have a good future at this job, but says he doesn't want it. He then goes on to say, quote, I finally settled on a date for my last day of this hell on earth. The 8th of September, a Thursday. The first day of school for all students at Mountain View High School. My reasons for this location and date in particular will be revealed later on in this story. But for now, just consider it symbolic, and eventually it will become iconic. God, I can't wait. It'll definitely come quick and I've got to spend the next two months preparing myself for it. A lot to do in such a short time frame? I'd rather take that route than continue living in misery any longer. This first month will mostly consist of gathering all my firearms, ammo, explosive materials, etc. And the second month will consist of planning as well as training and getting used to the weapons, throughout all of it, of course. Mass murderer. No one saw this coming. Absolutely nobody. And I made damn fucking sure of that. You guys are all so shocked and appalled I'm picturing it now. Although I was the quiet kid with anger issues all throughout school, so maybe it's not as much of a surprise to some of you. I've always been dangerous though, like a ticking fucking time bomb, ready to blow. It's pretty apparent that Ethan has been holding in these thoughts for a while, considering he's only written two pages and has already established a plan of action. I personally think he's been planning something like this for a while, but it was never set in stone but instead an idea. But after pushing it to the side too many times, he became so confident that he would actually follow through with his plan this time. So he started writing and documenting everything down, starting on June 29th. His next entry from Friday, July 1st, 2022, pretty much tells us he wasn't just talking out of his ass. He writes, just bought my 870, and might I say it is a beautiful piece of weaponry definitely deserving of being the shotgun that'll blow my fucking head off, as well as others. It was only $3.99. Sucks, I gotta wait five days to get it, but hey, that's America for you. I also found a beautiful AR-15 for only $750, but it was still a bit unaffordable, but give me a couple weeks, and I'll have it in my possession. The guns are only the first parts of all the gear I need to gather, granted they're the most important. I need to start making bombs, crickets and molotovs specifically. They won't be the most complicated to make though, and they will sure as hell add to the carnage of September 8th. Crazy to think my life will be over in a little over two months, and that that date will be remembered by everybody as a horrible tragedy. But in all honesty, it's gonna be the greatest day of my fucking life here. He then talks about a coworker buying him a truck to help him pursue his future. He says, I wish I could just tell them no, but I can't if I want to keep up this mask as a young kid who wants to be successful in life and make money, when in reality, I fucking hate my life and want to get onto the next one already. They mean well, I know, but it's just futile at this point. I just have no enthusiasm whatsoever. I hope after all of this, they find someone willing to work and grow in life because I'm gone, done, finished with this life. I don't want to be here anymore. On Saturday, July 2nd, 2022, he talks about visiting his brother so they can watch UFC 276, acknowledging that it could possibly be the last show he and his brother will watch together. He writes, that'll probably be the only thing I'll miss about humanity. The raw violence the sport of MMA can provide you is simply amazing. Speaking of humanity, honestly, I fucking hate humanity. I hate the entire human race as a whole for what they've turned themselves into. They're not even people anymore. They have turned into robots. Programmed into a fucking schedule with beliefs of God and doing things the right way. Honestly, religion is a myth perpetuated by greed and used as a form of control. But I won't get into all of that just yet. Maybe the simulation theory is real and to get out you must die? Seriously though, what happened? 
society just continues to act as if existing here in this universe is worth it. Why? So I can live a life of credit, bills, work, control under a tyrannical government, and being unfulfilled in the one thing that I've always wanted? Fat chance. Not gonna happen. If this universe won't provide me with what I want, then I will simply move on and find it myself. I'm not exactly human anymore. I have a human body, but I've evolved a step above you fucking human shit. I have fucking self-awareness. I know that I'm not meant for this world anymore. I know that this world cannot give me what I desire. I'm not meant to be stuck here. I need something greater, and I will unleash my wrath on the human race on my way out, and it'll be godlike. Did you catch that? Some of you that are familiar with the Columbine school shooting of 1999 will have recognized some of that. That's right, he directly quoted Dylan Klebold from the basement tapes. The next entry was on the 4th of July. He wrote about how much he hates the holiday, stating that there is no freedom in the country and that we are slowly heading toward martial law. He also expresses his hatred of police and how he would like to kill an officer during the attack. Two days later on July 6th, he writes, quote, I hate the world, fuck society, fuck civilization, and most of all, fuck humanity. It's crazy how people trick themselves into believing that living a miserable existence on this earth is actually a blessing, when in reality it's truly a curse on your spirit. Once you're dead, your spirit is finally free. Death is truly the most beautiful part of existence. I understand that, and that's precisely why I want to get it over with. Why live a miserable existence for 50 to 60 more years when I can just get it over with and move on to peace now? 20 years of this shit is good enough for me. I've honestly made the best memories of my life, and it'll only get fuller from here on out, so I'm done. Side note, Disturbed is fucking awesome. I love that band, listening to Stricken at the moment. Just wanted to show some love to one of my favorite bands out there. He then goes on to mention the Highland Park parade shooting that took place on July 4th. There was a shooting on the 4th. I'm not surprised at all, honestly. I figured something would happen. The dude was an idiot, though. I don't understand why most of these mass shooters just give themselves up. Or even dumber, they try to get away with it like the dumbass on the 4th. There's no escape once you pull that trigger. You have two choices. Die, or surrender to an even worse life in prison. See, I'm aware of this. And in fact, I want to die. That's the main reason that this is happening. See, Harris and Klebold had the right idea. Yes, Columbine partially inspired this. I've been interested in the case for a long time, and it has provided the blueprint and part of the inspiration for Doomsday. I relate to Eric and Dylan on some level as well. They were the same as me. Good young men fucked by society. We also have a lot in common, so yes, before the media got their disgusting paws on it, I was partially inspired by the Columbine Massacre. Also, finally got a hold of the 870 yesterday. What a beaut she is. Sawing it off tonight, can't wait to see how she looks then, and especially how she shoots. Gonna be tricky to go and shoot her without getting caught. Sawed off equals federal prison, aka hell. But that shouldn't be much of an issue outside of target practice. No one else will see it. If I had a shotgun, I'd blow myself to hell. Referencing a song lyric from the song Piggy Bank by KMFDM. The next page is the lyrics from the Nine Inch Nails song called Piggy. The song Piggy is from an album called The Downward Spiral, which kind of explains how and why Ethan chose the title for his online journal, The Downward Spiral of Ethan Miller. The Downward Spiral album details the downward spiral of a man that ultimately ends in suicide. Ethan documents just that, his own demise. On Thursday, July 7th, 2022, Ethan writes about completing the sawing off process of his shotgun and how he's currently working on obtaining a second weapon, preferably an AR-15. He also plans on making Molotov cocktails the night before the attack. I mentioned earlier that this was a public document that anyone could read. It's hard to believe this with all these red flags, I personally believe that he changed it to public, right before carrying out his plan. It's gonna be a very dark and violent day in history, and I cannot wait. It'll be nice to black out and get all the rage out of my system before I cross over to the peace land. Honestly, there is a little bit of remorse just for my close friends and family members. I mean, this is gonna destroy them, but this is my life, 
and I'm choosing to do this with it. They had nothing to do with my decision. It's not necessarily about the killing, although innocent people are gonna die. That is just a cold, hard fact to be remembered as a significant event in history. There has to be casualties. I don't have a specific number in mind, nor does it matter very much as long as it's over 10. Those are the ones that are remembered the most, but it's more about causing mass destruction, terror, and chaos. History remembers what we destroy more than what we create. On July 8th, he expresses his impatience, stating he can't wait to die, and how his rage is just piling up. He then goes through some of the reasons why he's so full of rage. I guess the first one is my family life and childhood. Now my family are all good people, and I truly love them. But there are definitely some bad flaws, especially with the elders, and things that they could have and should have done differently, not just with me, but with my other cousins and siblings. Reason 1. Addicted to drama. My family loves drama. They are always so damn dramatic over the smallest things. For example, I remember when I was younger, I got in trouble for having porn on my phone. They turned it into a huge ordeal, and I was grounded for a week. I was like 15. What 15-year-old isn't going to have porn on their phones? Just one example of how overdramatic they all are. Reason 2. There always has to be a scapegoat. One thing I really hated about my family was their necessity for a scapegoat or someone to blame if something went wrong or broke. They would always find someone to blame and punish for it, and that shit really fires me up. Because it's so fucking idiotic to me, like nothing could ever just be an accident, or nothing can ever just be let go. There always had to be punishment for stuff that we weren't even responsible for. And reason three. Everyone else is right and I'm wrong. This is the worst of all because it still hurts and fucks with me to this day. Anytime I was to get in trouble, whether it be at school or not, my side of the story was always fucking ignored, and the authority figure was always right. Now there were times where I was in the wrong, and I was always honest when I got caught, but there were so many times where I would be defending myself from being harassed, and I'd get the shit for it because the other kids were either a jock or some fucking rich boy. My side would always be tossed aside as excuses and lying. What kind of fucking logic is that? How the fuck can you sit there and degrade and punish your own fucking family who's constantly being harassed every fucking day? I still just don't get it. And I still feel the pain of that kind of shit all the time really fucked me up and made me even more antisocial by the time high school came around and wrapped up. I still love my family unconditionally despite their flaws, but they definitely played a bit of a role in me becoming this way. These things that I mentioned just added to all the built-up pressure and rage. They aren't the only reason, though, and I'm choosing this all on my own. More rage. More rage. Ethan would end up ditching the idea of using his illegally sawed-off shotgun in the attacks, because the weapon continually misfired, and plans to use a previously purchased Remington 320 shotgun instead. Calling it not as aesthetically pleasing for him, he also talks about acquiring the AR-15 at the end of July, and on multiple occasions, expresses his loneliness and calling life a chore. Lately, life has felt like such a chore to get through. I just want to be at peace with her, my soulmate. She doesn't exist here. I have to cross over to the other side to finally meet her. I've always wanted love. That's all I ever wanted in this life, and I'm just not gonna find it here. I wasn't built for love here. If I was, I wouldn't be as antisocial as I am, but that's how I was wired to live here as an antisocial robot who conforms to society. It's pathetic, really. On the other side, that won't be an issue. My spirit will be free and at peace with my true soulmate. That might sound crazy, but it's all I have. I've been so unlucky with love in this life, I have no other choice but to pursue it in the afterlife. That's where it truly lies, not here in this miserable existence. This goes a lot deeper, trust me, but I'll leave it there for now. September 8th is truly going to be a special day. It'll go down in human history as one of the most infamous and violent mass shootings of all time. A little under two months left. This reminds me a lot of Randy Stare. It seems they both believe in an afterlife that rewards them for doing something like this. In this case, Ethan believed he would be with a spiritual soulmate who he would fall in love with and live together forever. 
God, it's pretty crazy to read about what people believe. Monday, July 11th, 2022. All I keep thinking about is doomsday. It's on my mind 24-7 now. I come up with new ideas constantly. Maybe I should use Tannerite bombs instead of Molotovs. I'm not sure yet, but some kind of explosives are needed to 1. Hold off the pigs. 2. To cause as much damage as possible. You know I wish this was the late 90s instead of 2022. I'd be able to do way more damage and violence because this type of thing wasn't common. Although I suspect after my rampage, we'll be seeing these even more frequently. America will just continue down its dark path into apocalypse. Glad I won't be around for it. It's a crazy thing to know the gravity of what I'm about to do and still be able to go through with it and be at peace with what's going to happen. My life could have been different, but because of the mistakes and choices I've made, it's led me here. I'm not exactly upset with it though. I will find peace on the other side. I feel like this shooting is gonna be a bit different though, because I'm not like the typical mass shooter. I'm different. I'm not doing this for fame or to get revenge. I simply just wanna die and leave a lasting impression and violent mark on this world on my way out. I'm not a copycat, nor do I wanna be famous for this. I know the terror and horror I'm going to cause. Thankfully, I won't be here to have to deal with it. He then shares the lyrics to the song, The Becoming, from the same Nine Inch Nails album from earlier. He must have really loved this album, possibly even saw himself in it. On July 13th, he talks about hating the idea of having a job, debt, and paying bills. He talks more about purchasing the necessary amount of ammunition for his shotgun and his soon-to-be AR-15. I need to start buying ammo. I'll buy a couple boxes this weekend, but the budget is pretty tight until I get my AR. I can't wait to get that thing. A real fucking killing machine. I'll need to also purchase a drum mag as well as about six extra clips. I'm thinking overall I'll need around 250 to 300 rounds of 5.56 NATO for the AR and around 100 to 150 rounds for the shoddy. Fatigues are also here which is dope. The first part of the outfit is here. It was pretty surreal to see them though. The reality hit a little harder but in a good way. It was like a weight is about to be lifted off my shoulders. I cannot wait to leave this place. He talks about feeling like two different people. One of them is a caring, loving, compassionate person who just wants to succeed in life, while the other is a murderous monster that is full of rage and craves violence. He then shares the lyrics to the song I Do Not Want This from the same Nine Inch Nails album. Sunday, July 17th, 2022. Love, I've always craved love. I just wanted a loving partner who would return the same affections I gave them. A soulmate, so to speak, and I never got it. And do not fucking say that it's my fault, because it isn't. I tried everything, I asked girls out, I professed my feelings and showed them, but it wasn't enough for them. I don't exactly blame women as a whole for this, although you all could have been more accepting and could have given me a shot, and maybe I wouldn't have been so eager to blow people's fucking heads off. I believe in existence after the fact though. I'll find my soulmate soon enough. Existence is spiritual. The spirits are locked inside our human bodies and must be born as humans. But once the human dies, the spirit is then set free to go wherever they choose after death. I'm choosing to find peace with her. I know she exists on the other side. I can feel her calling out to me. I will be with you soon, my love. The animal just has some killing to do beforehand. To me, he seems like a mixture between Elliot Roger and Eric Harris, the thirst for love, and the thirst for absolute destruction. Monday, July 18th, 2022. Growing impatient, Ethan writes, quote, I wish honestly I could just die in my sleep and not wake up. The amount of energy it takes to simply open my eyes and get out of bed is crazy. It's just becoming even more difficult by the day. I have no motivation to even want to leave my room and snap into reality. I just want it over. I want to be free and find peace, that's all I want. All my family and friends just want me to have fucking motivation and ambition. They want me to enjoy life. How can I when there's just nothing to enjoy about living anymore? God, I can't wait to just end it. Under two months left, just a few fucking weeks left, and it'll be done. Once again, he dedicates a page to another song from the Downward Spiral album, writing the lyrics to the song, Reptile. 
Friday, July 22nd, 2022. I think I've officially saved enough money for the AR. I'm gonna go and see what exactly I can find. I'm not looking for anything too particular, but it has to be able to shoot hollow point 5.56. I'll also buy more ammo for the shotgun as well. Slugs and double O buckshot. I can't wait for doomsday, it's gonna be such a fucking riot. I mean the adrenaline rush is gonna be fucking awesome. God I can't wait. It's gonna be different than your average shooting. I plan on inflicting the most damage from the fires set by the Molotovs. The most chaos, pain, terror, and pure fucking violence upon this town. That day, it'll be remembered forever. Three days later, on July 25th, he finally purchases the AR-15 and writes, Finally, I finally have my AR-15. You're all fucked now. This 5.56 is badass. Absolutely beautiful gun that's so easy to handle it's crazy. I thought it'd be at least a bit more complicated lol. The arsenal is almost complete. Now I just have to get the rest of my gear as well as ammo and magazines. Holding that AR was surreal as hell. It's real now. This is happening. And I cannot fucking wait. I'll finally be rid of this life. This point during his life, I believe he lived at the Fox Hollow apartments with his younger brother. And his reasoning for buying the weapons, when anyone would ask, was that he bought them for protection and it turns out that they believed him. On the next page, he shares another song from the Downward Spiral album. This continues to be a regular occurrence up until his last entry. I'm going to save some time and just list every song he shares throughout his writings. Closer, Terrible Lie, Heresy, Ruiner, Something I Can Never Have, Eraser, Big Man With A Gun, and All That Could Have Been, A Warm Place, The Downward Spiral, Hurt, all of these songs are from the Downward Spiral album by Nine Inch Nails. It's not every song from the album, but it's most of them. His next two pages show he's growing more and more impatient. He can hardly contain the idea of dying and can't wait for the day to come. Friday, July 29th, 2022, Ethan writes, I want to fucking kill. I cannot wait to shoot someone in the head with my shotgun and watch their fucking brain and skull matter fly in the air in a bloody mist, or shoot them in the heart and watch the blood flow away like a stream. Maybe fuck the wound. I'm a fucking animal. I want to just sink my teeth into someone's throat and make it explode like a soda can and taste their warm blood. I want to get on top of a person and pulverize their head with my elbows. Just grab some weak average little human and rip their arms and legs off then hold their decapitated head like a fucking god. Hearing the sounds of flesh ripping away and bones snapping would be absolutely orgasmic. I can't wait to just send a bullet into someone's brain. This is going to be the bloodiest and most gruesome massacre in the history of massacres. I want blood, guts, brain matter, and pieces of skull and flesh to paint the walls and floors. Then I want to end my life here, in the most violent way possible, by eating the barrel of my shotgun, then blowing my head off and evacuating my brain with buckshot. It'll be the magnum opus of violence. It's pretty clear that Ethan's plan is set in stone, and there is no going back. He is lost, mentally, spiritually, and morally. Saturday, July 30th, 2022. Ugh, I just want to be with her, my soulmate. I want to be laying next to her, staring into her deep, beautiful eyes and kissing her exquisitely soft lips. That sounds like heaven. True heaven. To feel love. A kind of love that just doesn't exist here. Call it a fairy tale or a fantasy, I don't care. I just want to feel it. It's not possible here. I wasn't built for it here. Being antisocial and whatnot. I'm a loner. None of that will matter though. I can't find true love here, so I will pursue it in the afterlife opening each door to separate universes until I find her. Oh, she's just the definition of perfection. You'd never find a woman like her on Earth. She only exists in my subconscious. Made for my spirit as I am made for hers. Twin flames, if you will, bringing each other's souls back to life. On Wednesday, August 3rd, 2022, Ethan mentions the Stoneman Douglas trial, calling the shooter a loser and saying he should have, quote, offed himself. He'd be in a much better place, what a loser. Thank God I'm gonna die in my massacre. There'll be no trial whatsoever. I'm the fucking judge, jury, and executioner of myself. I'll control my own destiny. I am God. I'm my own God. 
I control where I go next and what happens in my next life, not some made-up Santa Claus reject. At least Santa brings people together. Jesus should have stayed dead on that fucking cross lol, although he never existed. Once you get rid of your moral compass, life and death become much simpler. No faith, no morals, no humanity. Further and further down the spiral we go. Friday, August 5th, 2022. I've ordered the Hurt shirt and my 9 inch nails hat for the massacre. I'll also be buying a shit ton of ammo tomorrow. My idea is to have at least 100 rounds for my shotgun, and about 2 to 300 rounds for my AR. But we'll see, as long as I have enough to last me until the end of the massacre. This is going to impact so many people and change so many lives. God, it'll be amazing. I won't get to experience the aftermath, but I hope that my legacy will be set in stone and you all will never forget what I did. The horrors I cause. Haha, <laughs> I've become truly sadistic and I fucking love it. I feel like I could just rip someone's fucking head right off their shoulders. I am gonna fuck you all up, physically, mentally, and emotionally. You're all fucked, pathetic little fucking humans. Sunday, August 14th, 2022. Ethan states he wants September to come already. He's tired of work, people, life, and seemingly everything. Ethan continues to write about how much he hates living, for many different reasons, most of which we have covered already. So I'm going to skip to his next major decision, which took place on Saturday, August 27th, 2022. The entry reads, fuck it, I'm done waiting, I can't wait any longer. The rage has become uncontrollable, and it can't wait two more weeks. Tomorrow, Sunday, August 28th, 2022, Doomsday. It came early, fuckers. Fuck this place. I can't stand more than one more day of absolute misery. It's fucking dog shit here. I know what awaits me on the other side and I'm ready for it. My time here is done. The next hours will be like an eternity. Violence. I've said it before and I'll say it one last time. That's what I was put on this earth to create. I was born to kill. I'm a natural born killer. So kill I will, and I'll have a damn good time doing it too. I'm just gonna blow you all apart, limb from limb, your fucking brains blown out of your damn heads, blood coating the floors, walls, ceilings, it'll be fucking horrific. The smells of gunpowder and death coated over by a thick layer of smoke, it'll be apocalyptic. I'm ready to let my rage out and die, move on to my next existence, or just at peace for eternity. Either one is much preferable to life here on Earth. This place is cursed. You humans have fucked it up so bad that I don't see it existing much longer. You guys are fucked. I'm fucked. My head is fucked. I'm done. I feel like I'm fucking trapped. I don't belong here. I never did. Either something triggered Ethan to act on his plan early, or what he said was true. That he couldn't hold in the urge any longer and had to act now. Anyway, with his intended target, the school, not being opened yet, Ethan chose the closest place to him a local Safeway just down the road from his apartment complex. It's hard for me to believe his life was as bad as he says. Many people suffer from the same things he has stated before, but not all of them take it out on innocent people. What do you believe was going on inside Ethan's head? Was it the mixture of hate, sadness, and ultimately the thirst for love? I'm not quite sure. His final entry on Sunday, August 28th, other than the two songs he posted afterwards, was titled, Goodbye. It read, Well this is it. Today's the day I die. It's nerve-wracking as hell, but also peaceful in a way. Knowing that after my massacre, I'll be gone. Truly at peace. Far, far away from this place. I'm literally counting down the hours, and minutes at this point. What's life without a little death and adrenaline? Ah, this is going to truly be epic. Why? I can already see all of you asking that question. And the answer is that I have no fucking idea. My head just doesn't fucking work anymore. It's like a living hell. I can never shut my thoughts off. Good thing a 12 gauge can take care of that problem. Also, I'm full of rage. I'm just fucking angry at the world and everything in it, and it's gonna be so fucking nice to just watch it all burn. I hate society. Society sucks. It's useless, constraining, and ultimately unfair. This system is not one that I can win in, no matter what anyone says after the fact. I know my place here, and I'm not gonna stick around for it. I mean, we are literally living in a dystopia. Citizens are perceived to be under constant surveillance. Citizens have a fear of the outside world. Citizens live in a dehumanized state. 
the natural world is banished and distrusted. Humans let this happen. We've evolved way too far technologically, but most human brains are programmed like fucking robots that they can't even be themselves because they don't know who they truly are. Wake up. This is why I'm fucking above you dumb little humans. I know that this world is done for, so I'm taking myself out of it. In the most animalistic and violent way possible. And don't even get me started on religion and that fake little god you worship. Anyone who actually believes in God is a fucking sheep. God doesn't exist. He never has existed. He's a made-up creation. Man created God to cope with the fear of death, and it has turned into the largest myth on earth, as a way to push morals and a false society on humans. The myth of God is absolutely one of the worst things that has been pushed among humanity. My humanity is gone. I've no emotions whatsoever. I feel nothing. That's what's gonna make this all so easy. I truly just wanna leave. I don't know where or when I lost it all, but I have. I have no hope for anything here. The only hope left is that death will bring me peace with her, and a new life, a million miles away in another universe. Life will never quite live up to the fantasies I've created in my head. No one or nothing will be able to ever live up to the expectations in my head, therefore I cannot live up to anyone's expectations. Most of all I really just hate myself. I'm a bloodthirsty evil fucking psychopath. To all my family and friends, I loved all of you dearly. None of this is your burden. I chose this 100% on my own. No one else is at fault. Thank you all for trying to help me through this hellhole, but it wasn't ever meant to be. I was born to do this. So, with all of that said, I want you all to go live happy human lives. You guys are pure and deserve it. Goodbye. Ethan. Later that same day, Ethan was home with his little brother, who he did not plan to harm. So he devised a plan to get him far from the scene of the crime. He gave his brother some cash to go grab himself and a friend some food, and told him he wanted some alone time in the apartment because a girl was coming over to see him. Well, his brother believed the ruse and took the money and left. Shortly after his brother left, Ethan geared up, he donned black clothing, his nine-inch nails hurt t-shirt, hat, and cargo pants. He equipped himself with what looks to be a magazine chest rig. He also wore a shotgun shell pouch that was similar to the one Randy Stair had worn during his attack. He stuffed ammunition and magazines on himself wherever he could fit and grabbed both weapons, which were both equipped with slings, so he could easily carry both with less effort. Anyway, with his brother gone, he was caught on a neighbor's ring camera exiting his apartment. As he walks out of view from the camera, he opens fire on his own truck in the parking lot. After doing so, he walks past the camera again and heads toward the complex's southwest exit, where he is seen by security cameras, firing at a parked van and other supplies behind an old navy store. Cars and pedestrians can be seen turning around after hearing the gunfire. Ethan can be seen just casually walking toward the front side of Old Navy. At this time, a civilian in a black Honda Civic was driving past Ethan. Ethan raised his rifle and opened fire on the vehicle, striking it multiple times. The driver, Jimmy Beatty, was struck by shrapnel, but was not seriously injured. Ethan continues on, past the Old Navy, approaching a Big Lots store. Ethan opened fire on the front glass doors of the building, barely missing the people inside. Instead of going inside Big Lots, Ethan nonchalantly walked by and toward the southwest entrance of Safeway. People inside can be seen in a confused state after hearing the shots over at the Big Lots. One employee of the Safeway appears to peek out the doors towards the shots. It seems she sees Ethan walking directly towards her. As she saw the armed man coming toward her, she ran away from the door and back into the store. It looks like she has her phone open and ready to call 911 when Ethan fired the rest of his first magazine into the glass doors. As customers inside heard the shots, most of them fled outside or found hiding spots within the store. He pauses for a second in the doorway, ejects the empty magazine and walks into the store while popping in a new magazine. I'm going to pause the footage here because it's a bit brutal, even though it is censored. Anyway, it was at this moment that Ethan fired at 84-year-old Glenn Bennett multiple times, resulting in Glenn's death. Glenn Edward Bennett was a military veteran who served as a medic in the Korean War. 
He was described as a talkative person who loved to interact with people. Glenn loved movies and classic cars and was all around a nice man. Ethan shows no care in the world as he walks away from where he had just shot Glenn. Footage shows him firing at random objects in the store until he runs his rifle dry once more. He stops to reload before continuing down an aisle of the store, firing more rounds into the shelf. After leaving the aisle, he finds another customer of the store who's having a hard time walking. This customer is Richard Johnson. Ethan walks around Richard, taunting him. Ethan then raises his rifle and fires a round into the floor near Richard's feet. Richard was not injured. I can't imagine what going through this experience was like for Richard. He's lucky Ethan wasn't just out for blood that day, or he may not have been spared. Ethan left Richard Johnson on the floor and continued on. Ethan fires several rounds into the deli counter and item fridges along the wall, shattering glass all over the floor. Here you can see 66-year-old Safeway employee, Donald Surrett Jr., hiding behind a display rack. As Ethan approaches his position, Donald jumps from cover and attacks Ethan with a knife. Unfortunately, before Donald could take down Ethan, he was shot once from the rifle and fell to the floor. During the scuffle, Ethan had dropped his shotgun on the ground near Donald. After shooting Donald once with the rifle, the weapon was empty. Ethan throws his rifle down and picks the shotgun up. He raises the shotgun and fires two more rounds into Donald's head, killing him. Donald Surrett Jr. was a 26-year veteran of the United States Army. He was employed by Safeway for five years. A family member wrote, quote, Don was a veteran and his instincts kicked in trying to save others. It's worth noting that he was convicted of sexual crimes involving a minor in 1994, but residents of Bend, Oregon still consider him a hero for slowing down Ethan. Ethan, with his shotgun in hand, turns and carries on walking. Shortly after, he racks the shotgun to load a new round into the chamber. He quickly sits down with his back against the produce shelves. He puts the shotgun to his head, and about three seconds after sitting down, Ethan pulls the trigger and ends his own life. The horrific event was over. At first, police were receiving reports that there were two shooters, but after walking through the scene, they concluded there was only one true suspect. Police searched Ethan's truck and apartment and found additional ammunition and the faulty sawed-off shotgun that Ethan decided not to use. They also found three Molotov cocktails. Ethan was identified by police, and at some point, they stumbled across his online journal, which explained a lot of things for them. In the aftermath of the killings, Governor Kate Brown issued a statement. I'd like to thank the Bend police officers and first responders who were on duty Sunday night. From the time of the initial dispatch call to the time the store was secured, only four minutes elapsed. They ran into the store while shots were being fired. Because they responded so quickly, lives were saved, said Governor Brown. Did Ethan see or hear the police coming, and as a result killed himself quicker? Or was he going to continue if the police response was slower? I can't really tell from the CCTV footage because there is no audio, but I guess anything is possible. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Let's all take a moment to remember the two victims of this tragic event, Donald Surrett Jr. and Glenn Edward Bennett. Thank you all for sticking around to the end of the video. I appreciate your support, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.